everyone. Uh, thanks for joining our session. My name is Stephanie Lamb. Um, if you were in the code lab earlier, I'm the one who ran up behind you whenever you got to a training example. Um, I'm an NL specialist here um, with Viv Lab Samsung Electronics. And I'm really excited to introduce Bixby to you and uh, you to the Samsung ecosystem. Hi, guys. I'm John. Uh, I'm a research engineer here at Viv Lab Samsung Electronics. I work on a number of different capsules. And I'm excited to talk to you about conversational dialogue today. So um, the goal of this session is to better acquaint you with the mechanics of training Bixby to understand natural language. And I think some of you probably have already caught Sarah's session earlier, um, an introduction to building a capsule. Um, but I know some of you haven't, so maybe, and maybe it's your first time working with a voice assistant. So we're going to do a few recaps and um, make this uh, easy for everyone to understand. Um, so you've already, if you've seen Sarah's presentation, you've caught a glimpse of this um, training stage. Um, but now we're going to delve even deeper to cover both NL training and conversational dialogues. So let's begin with our recap. Um, so what is a capsule? You're going to be hearing this a lot um, throughout our session. And um, the capsule is essentially it starts with a user's natural language query or NL query. Um, and it contains all of the code, the layouts, all of the NL training and dialogue responses, everything needed to transport the user from a simple request like find space resorts to the desired goal. And if you're wondering why this, uh, cap this spacey looking capsule is up here and why we keep talking about it, it's because our example capsule throughout all of our sessions is called space resorts. And we can find and book resorts with this capsule. So you can just imagine that we're living in a future where we can just moon hop and have a uh, space cantina crawl on a Friday night. So uh, let's have a little recap on uh, our key terms you'll be hearing a lot. So first we have a, a goal, which is the objective of an utterance. And goals can be either actions or concepts. And actions you can kind of think of as verbs. They're the operation that Bixby can perform on uh, behalf of the user. So these are often for transactional utterances like book me a space resort uh, January 22nd, um, or book me a space resort for two people. So this is something that's a little bit advanced, and you can actually learn more about this tomorrow at 12.30 when we talk about transactional utterances, the CMAC. Um, but today we're going to go a little bit um, more to beginner level and talk about searches. So concepts, goals are, um, an example of that would be our space resort concepts. And concepts are the concrete or abstract entities derived from NL inputs. So the plan is actually the procedure that Bixby builds to execute a goal based on user-provided inputs. And this is what that looks like. So we have two uh, inputs here, one being Jupiter and one being a refueling station. And those are passing through our goal output of finding a space resort. So in this session, we're going to talk about two types of concepts. One um, is uh, enum types. And they're a fixed set of possible values or um, symbols. So this makes sense to use when you have a fixed uh, set of values, like the number of planets in our, eco uh, in our solar system. So the next type you want to talk about uh, is names, which are text strings. And this is useful for when you want to support common NL inputs, but you don't necessarily want to enumerate every single possible option. So for example, refueling station is just one of maybe hundreds or thousands of uh, space amenities. So um, let's go straight to talking about training. Um, where does training fit in the capsule journey? Um, the user will speak to a device. The device is, um, or Bixby's ASR, or automatic speech recognition, is going to take those sounds and um, map it to words. And then Bixby's NLU, natural language understanding, um, is going to map those unstructured, uh, the unstructured language into a structured goal and create a plan. And as you've already seen in Sarah's introduction, you might have a perfect model already, but if you don't have any training, um, Bixby won't be able to understand fine space resorts. So you have to train by example. All right, so let's go straight to the IDE, and we can, um, this is Bixby Developer Studio, and we can add an example. So let's start basic with one input. Um, we're gonna go to the new training tab, or text box and type in find space resorts on Neptune. And here, by the way, it doesn't matter if you have uppercase or lowercase. Uh, so we can add this. 
Okay, so we have a suggested training below, but just for the sake of doing this step by step, let's do that. So in the goal text box, we're gonna type in space resorts. Our objective is to find a space resort, right? And then we're gonna tag Neptune as Neptune. This is our value. And notice we don't need to tag find space resorts with anything because it's already encompassed by our goal. So let's take a look at the plan below and make sure this looks right so we see that the input is correctly passing through our space resort goal. So now let's save this. Okay, great. So that's just for one concept. Let's add another example. Let's try uh, look up space resorts on Saturn um, with oxygen bars. <coughs> Great. So now we're going to add another goal for space resort, add space resort. And Saturn is going to be the planet Saturn. <laughs> and we can click in uh, drag to cover oxygen bars as our search criteria. Great. All right, so again, let's look at the plan below. And we can see this looks great. Let's save this. And notice that the status says not learned. If we could just scroll down a little bit. Okay, good. So these say not learned. Let's compile the model so we can update this. Okay, and then we can see the above one is also learned. So now let's, we've mentioned, um, uh, vocabulary a couple of times. So let's talk about that. What's the significance of that? Why, why do we need a planet vocabulary and a search criteria vocabulary? So uh, vocabulary reinforces words or phrases associated with concepts, our planet and search criteria concepts. So let's take a look at our planet vocabulary. So we have these symbols and their values um, and synonyms. So like we have the old earth for earth and the red planet for Mars. So Bixby will learn this vocab and then suggest training based on previous examples that Bixby has already learned. So for example, in that, um, when we first added find space resort to Neptune, we saw this um, uh, suggested training below. So you, Bixby has already learned a previous example, simil a similar example, and suggests annotation. So as a developer, this is really, really useful because you can train very efficiently and really consistently. So you can hover over your um, value or your um, entity and see that there's a correct tag there and the correct um, plan. So uh, let's talk about our search criteria vocab. So here's just like a snippet of what our search criteria vocabulary might look like. Um, as I mentioned before, it's a non-exhaustive list of various popular amenities or activities the user may request. So um, if our search criteria uh, core training is really strong, then Bixby will pick up some utterances for free here. You won't have to enumerate every single possible uh, space resort, uh, space amenity. So we can see that here. Um, we have, on the left side, you can see that there's, um, I think it's the sixth line, the sixth row, you can see that there's asteroid trapeze. And if we went into our training and searched for an utterance with asteroid trapeze, we don't have anything. We don't need to train it, though. We can, we can Bixby will know how to handle it in this case. So we can see that um, if we tested look up space resorts with an asteroid trapeze and ran that NL, we have these different um, result, results. And if we tapped on one, the Babylon, we can see that one of these, um, that, that asteroid trapeze is included. And the reason why that works is because we had some previous examples like look up space resorts with uh, a refueling station, and Bixby learned, okay, this is a search criteria, this fits this pattern, and so you don't have to train asteroid trapeze again. All right, so I, we saw that there was learned and not learned in our training tab. So what does that mean? Um, what's the significance of the learned status, and what do I do when something's not learned even after I try compiling the model? So, of course, uh, you want to try to aim for 100% learned utterances. Um, the more that Bixby is able to um, capture everything, then, of course, the smoother your interactions are going to be. So how are we going to um, troubleshoot when something is not learned? So one way is to look at the plan. 
um, if we could demo this, actually. Thank you. So let's try something like uh, find a space resort on Mars for January 22nd. OK, we can add this. All right, so we have some suggested training here. Let's just take a look at that. The goal is correct. Space resort, Mars is correct. And January 22nd is a daytime expression, which is also correct. If you're curious about this, um, we have a really great uh, library capsule, which you can use in any of the capsules you will build in the future. And you can learn about that um, in the session after this one. So anyway, we can save this. Oh, before we yeah, accept this, thank you. And then if we could take a look at the plan. This is already suspicious, right? We see December, or sorry, January 22nd is kind of floating by itself. Um, but what happens if we just try to save it anyway? Okay, so we have an illegal plan. Uh, right away, Bixby will uh, alert us or, that this is not something that our space resort goal can uh, accomplish. So in this situation, what can we do? We could consider whether we need to do some remodeling and now this goal should um, also be able to encompass this uh, type of utterance. Or we can consider, okay, maybe this goal is wrong. Maybe this is for a different type of goal, which is actually the case. Something like searching for a um, hotel availability would go for something with like a booking transactional goal. So again, this is a transactional goal booking. We'll, you'll be able to learn more about this tomorrow at 12.30. So let's leave this as is now for now. Um, if you ever come across an illegal plan and you, don't have, you need to remodel later, you could disable um, this and then come back to it. But for now, let's just leave it. And if we could, thank you. OK. So with that in mind, um, I just wanted to um, uh, encourage you to um, appreciate that training is an iterative process. So we always want to aim for 100% learned utterances, and that the planner is also a useful resource to investigate why an utterance is not learned. Um, so in summary, let's just keep out an eye, an eye out for uh, any not learned training examples, and also any unexpected Bixby responses to learned examples. So um, when we train, we'll test, we'll retrain, we retest again. And then what do we do at this retrain stage? Um, we would reassess the current annotations like we just did in that uh, legal plan example. Um, but we would also be adding diverse training examples. So for example, maybe we have fine space resorts on Jupiter that, that are kid friendly. We already have that in our training. But do we have, are there any kid-friendly space resorts on Jupiter? So they sound very similar, but syntactically they're quite different. And the more you di diversify your core training um, in this way, the more Bixby will be, able to, will be able to fill in the gaps. And when a user is um, trying an utterance that you did not anticipate, Bixby will be able to fill in the gaps and help you out there. So to counterbalance this uh, need for a diverse training. We also want to keep in mind that the utterance should be accurately um, representative of what users are actually saying in real life. So for example, a user probably wouldn't just go up to the device and say, show Mars, intending um, a list of Mars space resorts. There's no way where we would know, even human to human, that they would want space resorts there. So this sounds more like a continuation off of an utterance that uh, is already talking about space resorts. So let's take our NL training even a step further. All right, so we're gonna talk about training contextual conversation. Um, so far, all the utterances that we have introduced are cases that would initiate a new conversation. So what happens as the conversation prog progresses? Humans naturally tire of saying fine space resorts, space resorts over and over again. So our utterances would become briefer, right? Um, we would say things like, show the kid-friendly ones, or even, what about ones on Mars? So how can we train Bixby to understand what we're talking about? Um, I'm going to show you how to train an example first, and then John will show you how Bixby can extend the conversation when users are adding more and more inputs. So let's go over some key terms really briefly. Um, first, we have an outer query, which is the initial utterance, so something like find space resorts. Here's another example. Search for space resorts on Mars would be our battle arenas. Um, and then we have continuations. And these are essentially the, the follow-ups to the outer queries. They're, this is where the contextual details are refined. 
So something like show the kid-friendly ones, and what about low-gravity ones in Vetus? And we have a source goal, which corresponds to our outer query. Um, sometimes you call this a root goal. We also have a target goal, which is the goal of the uh, continuation utterance. Okay, so let's uh, add an example to Bixby Developer Studio. So let's add something like show the ones with volcanic spelunking. I picked a tricky one to spell. <laughs> okay. So um, our goal is still going to be space resorts because we still want to find space resorts, right? Um, so this is our target goal. We want to continue off a source goal so we can update this drop down menu here, continuation of, and then our source goal or root goal is going to be space resort. So it's still the same. Okay, so now we want to tag volcanic spelunking with search criteria. And again, uh, so show the ones with. We don't need to annotate that with anything because Space Resort already um, takes care of that. So let's see the plan. This looks great. Volcanic Spelunking is feeding into finding a Space Resort. So we can save this. Okay, and let's just compile the model so that Bixby can study and learn this. Great. So um, now that we know how to introduce uh, continuation training examples into the tool, um, how will she respond when the user extends the conversation with more and more search criteria? So John will help us out with that. Oh, cool. Thank you, Stephanie. So let me introduce you to the conversational model. For these, uh, for these first utterances, they were outer queries or uh, your initial utterance toward Bixby. But what I'm going to show you through a demo in Bixby Developer Studio's simulator is how can we maintain a context through our conversation with Bixby? How does it remember and maintain what we previously said? So for this, let's switch over to Bixby Developers, Bixby Developer Studio Simulator. All right, so here we are in the simulator. Let's make it a little bit larger on the, on the right side. Sure. And let's establish our initial goal. Let's say we're on a on a business trip. And for our business trip, we want to go to outer space. So for the first thing we need to do is find space resorts. So let's establish our initial goal and let's type in find space resorts. And we run the NL. And by the dialog, you see it says, I found these space resorts. With no input constraints, it returns the entire list of all space resorts. Let's scroll down and see some of the space resorts we can potentially have our business trip on. Okay, so it covers all the planets. Let's say you got, an, you got a meeting invite, and your meeting invite is for an office on Saturn. So we want to follow up with a continuation. We want to say N1's on Saturn. So you see, it kept our initial goal. It says, I found these space resorts, but it was able to, make, to, to add, incrementally add to our context. We said, one's on Saturn. So let's go ahead and click on one of them. So the Herschel Hotel is indeed on Saturn. Now let's say for our business trip, I want to keep fit. I want to keep healthy. So I want to limit my search results a little further. Let's say I want ones with a centrifuge gym. So let's follow up with a continuation. Let's say and ones with a centrifuge gym. Okay, so by the dialogue, you see one. It maintained our initial goal. It's finding space resorts. It's also, it also kept our planet, Saturn. And it says and ones with that option, which is the centrifuge gym. So we're able to build this context incrementally. If we see here, this space resort is on Saturn and has a centrifuge gym. Let's say, you know what? Saturn's a little too far. I'm feeling a little bit homesick. Let's find a different planet. We can just call into that meeting anyway. 
Let's try N1s on Jupiter. It's a bit, it's only 408 million miles uh, closer to home. So with this continuation, we see that by the dialogue, it kept our initial goal of space resorts. And it was able to replace the planet this time with the, those that are on Jupiter. And it also kept our search criteria of a centrifuge gym. So let's click on one of them. And the Babylon is on Jupiter, and it has a centrifuge gym. Let's follow up with another continuation. Let's say for our, our, our business trip, we have some time over the, week, over the weekend. We're able to plan a little bit. And so let's add some more outdoorsy activities to our business trip. Let's say, and ones with crater canyoneering and orbital zip lining. So it kept our initial goal of finding space resorts. It kept our planet, Jupiter, and it was able to additively modif modify our context and have multiple search criteria. Let's click on one of them and verify that indeed it's on Jupiter and it has orbital zip lining and crater canyoneering. Cool, thanks. Yeah. Now let's walk through a little bit and see how does Bixby maintain this context throughout our whole conversation. So remember we started with an initial state. We said find space resorts. And with no input constraints at all, all of the space resorts were returned. So let's model this. In our action, find space resorts, let's just declare the output of type space resort. It can return one or many space resorts. Let's modify this, this model a little bit. Remember we said N1's on Saturn? So we can add planet to our model. Let's add planet as an input. So we just create this collect block with an input of type planet. And second, we, can, we added to our context by adding a search criteria. So we can build this context incrementally. We said N1's with a centrifuge gym. So let's add search criteria to our, to our model. This way we can build a context with different input types. Let's refine our inputs a little further. Using this keyword max, we can define how many of each input do we want. Using max, we can say, I want max many, so I can have multiple of that input, or by default, max one, so one input of that type can be maintained in that context at any time. Let's apply this to space resorts. We said, how about ones on Jupiter, it was able to replace the planet from Jupiter to Saturn. So let's model this. Let's say planet is max one, which is the default, so that at one time, we can only have one planet in the context. If we introduce another planet, it would replace the older planet. Finally, we said, how about ones with orbital zip lining and crater canyoneering? we are able to additively modify our context. If we have multiple search criteria, all, both of them, or all of them, will be ma maintained in the context. So let's add max many to our input. So let's try to use our conversational model. Let's try to test our model and see if any problems come up when we use our model uh, with, with these continuations. So let's establish another scenario and establish our goal and all our inputs in one shot. Let's say I want to find space resorts on Neptune with VR battle arena and hologram teleconferencing. So by the dialogue, you can see it narrowed down the space resorts list to just one resort that met all of the input criteria. 
And let's modify our context by, by means of continuation. Let's say we want to change the planet. So we say N1's on Venus. Well, it replaces the planet. The old one was Neptune. But we get an empty result. It says, I couldn't find any space resort on Venus with your options. And this poses a problem. Adding too many input constraints sometimes could give you this empty list. The resorts that meet all of your criteria that you've built through conversation gets fewer and fewer. And the goal gets harder and harder to achieve with each new constraint that you introduce. And sometimes it gives you this empty result with no resorts. What can we do in this case? So I have a solution that we, I propose, and let's show it through a demo. So we've changed the model, and let's compile our, our new model. And let's run the exact same scenario. I want to find space resorts on Neptune. with VR Battle Arena and hologram teleconferencing. OK, so it was able to narrow down. It, is, it kept our goal. We established our goal and all the input constraints all in one shot and narrowed down our space resource to just one resort. Let's follow up with a continuation. And one's on Venus. OK, so by the dialog, you can see it couldn't find any space resorts on Venus with your options, but it returned a result for you. And not only is this result, um, so this result is on Venus, but it dropped the search criteria. So it, it essentially relaxed our constraints by removing the older contextual inputs before we had two search criteria, it dropped that. But it was able to keep our new constraint, Venus, as the planet. And that's what constraint relaxation is. So constraint relaxation is a way to answer the question, the current question at hand. And ones on Venus, well, it couldn't find ones that met all of the all of the contextual inputs. So Bixby just dropped those contextual inputs in favor of your new search criteria. And to add this to our model, you simply declare in the output block on empty, just drop the contextual inputs. And this way, Bixby changes its behavior to try to answer your question and to avoid getting, all, getting an empty result. So let's change gears a little bit. Let's refine our inputs by using this key, keyword min. And min defines whether the input must be required or if it can be optional, if it doesn't have to be provided by the user. So let's try this experiment. What happens if we make search criteria as a required input? Let's see how Bixby behaves. To do this, let's try a demo in the simulator. OK, so we've changed our model. So let's compile it. OK, and let's establish our goal. I want to find space resorts. Let's try find space resorts. So immediately you see by the dialogue, it's prompting you. It's prompting you to provide the required input that we just, uh, create, we just modified our model with. By the dialogue, which is fully customizable, you can say, it says, please provide search criteria. And underneath, it provides a form where you can click and type in the search criteria that you want to search with. Now, what's the most natural way to answer this prompt? 
Well, you said find space resorts with your voice. So of course, to answer this prompt, you can use your voice. So let's try VR Battle Arena. And so it was able to meet or find a space resort with the option of VR Battle Arena. And just click on one of them just to verify that it indeed has VR Battle Arena. So Bixby was able to maintain or to change its behavior based on the, our new input constraints. Thanks. It showed this prompt for a required input automatically. It asked the user to provide the required input. Note that it did not throw any kind of error. And you don't have to say that it, that you, that you don't need to catch every single error for every single input type. Instead, dynamic program generation created this prompt automatically. And since the user did not provide this input, it prompted the user to provide this input so that it, you can meet your goal. Let's refine our inputs further. Let's try something different. Let's try requiring the planet input. As a, as a reminder, min defines if the input must be required or if it can remain optional. So let's try, let's try making planet a required input. And not only is it a required input, but many different planets are provided, like Earth, Mars, Venus, but only one of them is required to meet your goal. So let's see what happens. And let's try this through a demo. OK, so we just changed our model. So let's compile it. And let's try find space resorts. So it provides you with a prompt. And this selection prompt allows you to meet the goal, meet the, new in, meet the new constraints that you provided. Min required means that you must provide a planet. So you can select any of these planets and choose which, which planet you want to go, on, to go to. So if we hit back, again, what's the most natural way to answer a prompt? Well, you said find space resorts with your voice. So let's try it with our voice. Let's answer saying Venus. And it was able to narrow down your space resorts to just one resort, which is on Venus. Thanks for the demo. We can do a little bit better. We can skip this prompt entirely. If you see, it's going to ask you every single time, which planet do you want to go to? Well, if Bixby can learn more about you as a user and notice that you keep, you keep clicking Venus every single time, well, Bixby can, can learn that about you and can auto-select a planet based on who you are as a user. It would improve user experience by just skipping this screen entirely. So if you want to learn more, you can see Alex's and Paulina's session on best practices following this session. So let's go back to the simulator. And about prompts. So in the search bar, I'm, I'm simply searching for prompt, tra prompt training. And for that planet that I answered with my voice, you need, to you need to train Bixby to understand that you're saying Venus at this prompt. So when it recognizes the planet, it knows that you're answering a prompt. And note that you can train one planet, and, and it should learn all the other planets as well. Okay, cool. 
And with that, I'll hand it back to Stephanie to talk more about how to scope your capsule. Great, thank you. Thanks. Okay, so we've seen um, a lot of ways that we can uh, go into the tool and add training and add uh, Bixby's responses. Um, but if you're curating all this data, how can we make sure that uh, Bixby is able to select our, oops, let's go back one, is able to select our capsule, so space resorts, and not another neighboring capsule. So we're throwing around the words like Mars, Pluto, um, what else, uh, low gravity. So you know, if we are saying this, how do we know Bixby is going to pick up space resorts and not um, something about Roman mythology or space travel or space facts or something like that? Um, so the best way to do this is to really um, define your NL use cases. So let's go over that. <clears throat> so first you want to um, identify what goals your users will achieve in your capsule. Um, try to be really specific about that right away, um, at, right as you're starting to build your model. And then also what are the most common utterances to reach those goals. So here's a visual we want to keep in mind. Um, if you are... Um, you have these core use cases. You want to keep your goals succinct and tightly scoped. So you can imagine this is kind of like a dartboard. If you had a dart, you can throw your dart and hit this target pretty easily. It's easy to aim and easy to hit. Um, but if you start to try to add some uh, edge cases, things get a little bit hectic, right? So um, in some cases, you might want to keep some of those corner cases. So for example, show me reviews to Pluto Resorts, for Pl Pluto Resorts. Maybe you weren't expecting users to say that, um, but that's something that your model can adjust to and you can um, keep within your scope. However, um, the more you do that, it's possible that things like, do I need a passport to go to Mercury doesn't seem as crazy as it is now. Um, so we want to make sure that um, that we're avoiding adding partitions to our dartboard. Um, the more partitions you add, the more difficult it is to hit your target, right? So all of your capsules and all of your goals have, should have really sharp, uh, well-defined focuses. Okay, so again, this is what we want. We want tightly scoped capsules, and there are three benefits that come out of this. One, you'll have um, a lot easier of a time to classify, uh, for Bixby to classify your targeted goal and capsule. And you'll have higher NLU confidence during unanticipated uh, rephrasing or automatic, automatic speech recognition errors. And then uh, you'll have, of course, consistent coverage. So if users are not um, growing accustomed to you uh, accommodating certain edge cases, they won't begin to expect that your capsule can uh, take care of uh, are there any travel advisories near the sun? That should belong to a different capsule entirely, like space travel. Okay. So um, the takeaway from all this is we want to focus on how will your, your users, your future users, speak to your Bixby capsule. Um, we want to, you know, keep in mind that you know Bixby and the IDE are really great ways um, to. They're really invaluable tools. Um, especially with all the dynamic um, gen generation, but your guidance, your uh, curation of all this data will ultimately really enrich the user experience. So thank you for listening. Um, and these are some future um, things that we're going to be bringing to the table. But um, in the meantime, please feel free to come up and talk to us later. We're going to be at CodeLab. Um, and these are some uh, upcoming sessions. We mentioned um, best practices is happening right after this. And tomorrow at 12.30, we're going to be covering, or CMX is going to be covering transactional utterances and experiences, which is going to be really popular for, I know, a lot of you. So we'll look forward to meeting all of you later. Thank you.